Hi everybody, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I have what I think will be an interesting video. So if you've been following me for a little bit, you will have seen a couple of my latest series, which will be pertinent for today's video. So the first series I want to mention is the creation of my ultimate travel watercolor palette. And the other series I want to mention is my swatch book videos. So how do they all tie together? Well, let me explain. When I created my ultimate travel watercolor palette, the idea I had in mind was that I wanted to be able to mix my own colors, which is why I got a warm and cool color of each primary. And then I got some other neutral tones and other colors that I enjoyed working with. But I really wanted to have a set of primary colors that would be ideal for color mixing. What I did was that I got a cool yellow, a warm yellow, I have a warm red, and for the cool red, I didn't get another color. I just used the Van Gogh Quinacridone Rose that I already had. Since I don't really use pinks in general, I did not want to go out and buy an expensive tube of pink. I wanted to try the one that I had already. And if I found myself using it a lot, then I would buy a better quality paint, which is what I did, because you can see that this color, I don't know if you see too well, but this color is one of the colors that is at pretty much the lowest level in my whole palette. So I've been using this one a lot, which was a big surprise for me. I've been using it all by itself or in mixes. So I decided I would go out and buy a professional quality. Van Gogh is pretty good, but I really wanted to have my Daniel Smith, you know? So I got Daniel Smith Quinacridone Rose. I did lots of research to know exactly which one I should buy. There's a lot of good options, but I think that this one will be a good cool toned red. It's a pink, but it's going to act as my cool toned red. Then for the cool toned blue, we have Daniel Smith Stalo Blue Green Shade. And for the warm tone, I use a color that I already had which is Daniel Smith Identron Blue. And this one I know is quite an unconventional choice. Usually you would use an ultramarine to act as your warm blue, but I decided this one is pretty warm and I like it and I already have it. So I'm gonna use that one as my warm blue. But then, you know, I got some comments from some of you telling me that I should really use ultramarine and French ultramarine in particular. And I always listen to you. You know me. I decided to go out and buy Daniel Smith French ultramarine. So this video is going to contain two parts. We're going to replace these two colors in my palette and we'll have to unfortunately create a new swatch card but I had already planned it. So I already have one that is cut here. And while we're at it, I might just take the time to think about all my other colors because I've been using this palette for a little bit now. I might want to make a couple of changes and adjustments. So that's what we'll do in the first place. If you've been wondering when I bought these, I recently published an art haul. I think it's the last video I published. So if you want to see it, you can go watch it. I even swatched them. And I created some mixes with a green that I bought. And I bought a bunch of other art materials that are so exciting. So if you want to see it, just click on the link here or go watch it after. But yeah. So first things first, we're going to replace the colors in this palette. And then let's talk about the other part of the video. Let's have a discussion about our swatch book. So I don't know if you remember that video. It's a video that I published more than a year ago, I think in which I created the ultimate swatch book and I was inspired by bullet journals. So I have a table of contents. I have a key. Um, I have some templates for swatching. I have a section about color theory, um, some different mixing charts, some color wheels, all different options that I could use to swatch colors, to play around with color mixing and 
to swatch all my new art materials. Soon it's on my list. I want to create an updated video of this swatch book video because I've been using it for a bit and so I have some comments, maybe some things that I would change. But anyway, let's go back to that color theory page. So what I did at first when I created this page is I read about color theory and how mixing warm and cool tones could help you achieve vibrant or muted colors, depending on what your goal is. So that's why I did this page. I had a look at some cool tone colors, some warm tone primaries, and I tried to mix them and see if I could achieve vibrant or muted tones. So what I want to do is recreate this page with all my new primaries here because when I created this page, I did not have all of these thought out primaries. I just had a bunch of colors. So I went through all the colors that I had and I tried to pick the colors that would correspond to cool or warm tones of all the primaries. But, you know, I think for the yellows, it was fine for the blue. I don't know, they both seem a bit warm and same thing for the reds, they both seem warm. So I don't think that the result that I achieved when I mixed them was true. So I want to recreate this page with my primaries and explore a bit more. Well, have some fun with color mixing with primaries. In fact, let's start with this part of the video and then we're going to fill out this color palette because I think that for you, maybe the most interesting thing to see right now is the color theory section and the color mixing. And then after, if you're still interested, well, you'll see me replace these colors, swatch my new swatch card. So it's going to be very relaxing. And we'll also talk about the changes that I decide to make in this palette if I decide to make some, which I think I might. I have a couple of ideas. So let's start with the color theory. I created a new page. So I took out my tubes since some of them are in tubes, the new ones and the older ones are in the palette, they're in their dry form. I want it to be fair and use all of the paints in their tube form. So, you know, some of them could be harder to reactivate. So I didn't want to take any chances with, you know, having problems of reactivation and having colors not be as strong as they could be. So we're going to use the tube form for these. First of all, what I want to do is swatch all of these colors. And this time I wrote the names because in the last page, I didn't write the names. So I'm not even sure which colors I used. So let's start with our cool colors, which will be Azo yellow for the yellow. Such a pretty color, so vibrant. Then for the cool red, we'll have Daniel Smith Quinacridone Rose, which is also a very pretty color. And the blue will be Daniel Smith Stelo Blue Green Shade. It's so vibrant. I love that. I feel like my swatches are getting bigger as we move towards the right. Now let's watch the warm row. Okay, let's start with the yellow, which will be Daniel Smith Hansa yellow. You can really see the difference between the two. It's very interesting to swatch. And this time for the cool colors, you can really see that the cool red that I chose is cool. There's no hesitation about it. Compared to the last one, it wasn't very clear which which was the cool one and which was the warm one. And now we can really see like this one is clearly the cadmium red hue is clearly warm compared to quinacridone rose. And then let's watch French ultramarine to see what the difference between the tail blue will be. So here we have our cool and warm colors. So what I would like to do now is sort of recreate the triangles that you saw on the other page. So what I did is that I put a, a circle of cool yellow, circle of cool red and cool blue and have them merge in the middle to see what colors we could get. So I think it could be a fun way of mixing our colors, but later we can also 
tried other ways. So I remember that I had to work quite fast. I had an hesitation right here because I looked at this one, this cold yellow, the azo yellow, and it really looks like Hansa yellow. But it's, I know it's not. It looks so warm. Hmm. But I can see on the, my palette, this one and this one, they look different and I really took it from here. All right, so let's, let's move on. Let's try to be quick. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to try to have the yellow go towards each other color and then have the pink go towards the blue here and have it reach the yellow and see what we get. But I think we're gonna have to mix them to see exactly, like to have a better idea because right now, obviously, it's not the best mix right here. But we're getting, I think, an interesting purple. And we should be getting an interesting green, but I think we're gonna we're gonna do better swatches after this. This is just like for looks. It looks fun. And what if I add a bit more pink here? Anyway, so that's it for this one. Let's try to do the same thing with our warm colors and see what kind of mixes we get. So this is our warm yellow. Okay, I can see the difference between these two. Then our warm red. And then our warm blue. And once again, half the colors reach the middle. So in theory, we should get a warm orange right here. Or another warm orange. Yes, warm, of course, because both of the colors are warm, but I mean a, a vibrant orange. Now we're creating our purple right here and we're going to create our green too. Here are the mixes. They're still drying a little bit, but we can have a look at the colors that we created. It's not the most ideal way of mixing colors, obviously. We just did it because it's fun. But while that was drying, I had a look at my color theory from the other time that I did it. So if I remember correctly, when you look at cool and warm colors, you have to look at the undertone. So let's say a cool yellow has a blue undertone and a warm yellow will have a red undertone. Okay, so what if I mix blue with, the, with this yellow, then I get a green. So if I wanna get a vibrant green, then I have to mix it with a blue, but with a blue that has a compatible undertone with this one. So let's see, a warm blue has a red undertone it wants to mix a purple. And if I take a cool blue, it has a yellow undertone, it's a green shade. So it wants to create a green. So what I need to do if I wanna have a vibrant green is mix two colors that tend towards the same color. So I need to mix the cool yellow with the cool blue to create a green because both of these want to create greens. It's kind of like, all of us have to work together towards a common goal. So these two, they want to create greens. It would be easy for them. So according to this theory, if I were to mix these two colors, then I would get a vibrant green. But if I want to mix this cool yellow with this warm blue, this is a blue that has a red undertone. So if I were to mix it with red, I would create a purple. So it doesn't want to create a green. So if I were to mix these two, then I would get a more muted green. So we can see down here, this is the green that we get when we mix these two, but because there was too much water and you know, it's not a really good mix. So I think we should try to remix these colors. And also I would like to mix this cool yellow with this warm blue and just see what kind of colors we get. So I'm going to take my little palette here, put some yellow down here. So this first mix 
is going to be with the phthalo yellow, a uh, phthalo blue, I mean. This is a very interesting color. This is pretty vibrant. Very cute. I like it. And then let's mix the same azo yellow, but this time with the warm blue, the French ultramarine. I really like this green, but it's true that it's not as vibrant. It's a bit more muted, a bit more neutral. But for me, I like this mix better just because it's a bit more my style. But it's the kind of thing that is really good to know when you're mixing your colors, what you might achieve. And then I think it would be interesting to see what color we would get if we mix the two warm tones. So the warm yellow with the warm blue. So according to the theory, the warm yellow has a red undertone. So if you mix it with red, it wants to create an orange. That's the color it tends towards. So we just mixed it with the warm blue, which has a red undertone. If we mix it with red, it wants to create a purple. So they don't tend towards the same color. So we would not get a very vibrant mix. This is what we got. We got a green that is a bit more muted. Now, what would happen if we mixed this warm yellow that wants to create an orange with this cold blue, which wants to create a green. According to the theory, we would not get a very vibrant mix either. So we could do it here. We have a bit of space. So we have our mix here. Hmm. Honestly, I think it's pretty vibrant. I really like this mix. These are the four types of greens that we can create with our primary colors. This one here is more vibrant than I thought it would be. So you can see here is the most vibrant one, the one that I was expecting to get. These two are the least vibrant ones, which I was also expecting, but this one, I wasn't expecting that result, but we'll see what it looks like when it dries. Maybe it's gonna be less vibrant but it's so good to be able to know what kind of colors we can obtain with our mixes. So I think what we'll do is that we're just gonna go ahead and mix all the colors that we have a little bit like this. So it's gonna help us explore and get a bit more familiar with our colors. So according to our plan here, azo yellow is a cool tone. So it has a blue undertone, it wants to create a green. Quinacridone Rose is a cool tone. It also has a blue undertone, but it wants to create purple. So we should not get a very vibrant mix. Which is what I have a feeling that we're getting. It's very pretty. It's not like, it's not super vibrant either. Then if we mix our azel yellow, let's just mix the colors and then we're gonna analyze, okay? So, azo yellow with cadmium red hue. It does not look like it's very vibrant either. Then if we mix our Hansa yellow with quinacridone rose, we get somewhat of a more vibrant color, I would say. Yeah, I like this one. It's pretty vibrant. And now let's mix our last mix, which is the two warm colors. Hansa yellow medium with the cadmium red medium hue, which is vibrant as well. What we'll do is that we are going to create our other mixes. We'll do that on this page. And then once it's dry, we're going to analyze everything. This is beautiful. Now, if I add some French ultramarine to my quinacridone rose, I'm sure we will get something very pretty as well. Oh, this is beautiful too. Yeah, that's why I find myself using quinacridone rose a lot more than I thought I would, because in mixes, 
It's so pretty. Then let's do the same, but with the cadmium red that we have. So let's add a bit of Telu Blue in our cadmium red. I can see right away that the color we get is not as juicy, is not as vibrant, not at all. But I love this color. It's so interesting though to see all the mixes you can get. Beautiful. Okay, so we're gonna leave this to dry and we're going to have a closer look to all of our mixes. Sorry if the lighting keeps changing, it's because it's the next day, so now we have the beautiful natural light. I created this little tool here um, because I found that going back to the other page is always confusing and for this video it's not always fun. So I created this little guide with all my cool colors and my warm colors with the names and with their undertones and which color they tend towards. Here I mix the cool yellow with the cool red. And if I have a look at the undertones for the cool yellow, it has a blue undertone. So it wants to create a green and the red one has a blue undertone, but it wants to create a purple. So I wouldn't expect the most vibrant mix out of these, this mix, which I don't think I got, so so far it makes sense. If I have a look at the cool yellow with this blue undertone, it wants to create a green. I mix it with the warm red that has a yellow undertone, so it wants to create an orange. I would not expect a vibrant mix either here because they do not want to create the same color. They do not tend towards the same color. So again, I did not get a very vibrant mix. Now I feel like these two are more vibrant, so it's going to be interesting to have a look at our color mixes. So for this one, I mix the warm yellow, which is the Hansa Yellow Medium, that has a red undertone, so it wants to create an orange. I mixed it with the cold red that has a blue undertone and it wants to create a purple. So here, I would not expect a very vibrant mix, but I feel like I still got something that is pretty vibrant. But one thing that I noticed is that when quinacridone rose is involved, I feel like sometimes I get a vibrant mix where I don't expect one. So I don't know. I feel like this color is very vibrant. I don't know, but I really like what I got here. And finally, I mixed the warm yellow with the warm red. Both of them want to create an orange. They both tend towards an orange, so I would expect a vibrant mix. And I feel like I got a vibrant mix. So I feel like this makes sense. Now let's have a look at our purples. Here I feel like I have two very vibrant colors and two very muted colors. So let's have a look first at our cold mix. So I mixed Daniel Smith Quinacridon Rose, which has a blue undertone, it wants to create a purple, with Phthalo Blue Green Shade. So it has a yellow undertone and wants to create a green. So I would not expect a very vibrant mix here, but I feel like I still got one. But it's less vibrant than this one. So it makes sense, I guess, because this one is the quinacridone rose that wants to create a purple with the Daniel Smith French Ultramarine, which has a red undertone, and it also wants to create a purple. So I would expect a very vibrant mix if I mix my cold red with my warm blue. And this is what I got. Very vibrant, very pretty. Then here, I mixed my warm red, so cadmium red medium hue, that tends towards an orange, with my cold blue, phthalo blue, which wants to create a green. So I would not expect something very vibrant out of this mix and I did not get something very vibrant. For our last mix, I mixed Daniel Smith Cadmium Red Hue, which is warm, that wants to create an orange, with the warm blue, French Ultramarine, which wants to create a purple. So they don't tend towards the same color, so the mix is not very vibrant either, but it still is more vibrant than this one. Maybe it's because the blue that I used had a red undertone, so it tended towards a purple. It's unclear. I think this is gonna be a very useful tool when I wanna mix my colors because it's easy to forget, at least for me. I'm not the most knowledgeable in color mixing, so I think that a little tool like this will be very helpful. But yeah, I think it's a lot of practice. So I was thinking I could try one last thing before I go, which is somewhat of a color wheel, but I think it's gonna be easier for us to see the differences in colors. So we'll do it on this page. I'm first gonna create the wheel and then I'll come back to explain. 
Okay, so I don't know how well you can see, but here I created a double primary color wheel. So what we'll do is that we'll have a spot for each primary. I wrote the names where they should go. So we'll have our warm red, our cool red, our warm blue, cool blue, warm yellow, cool yellow. And what we'll do with that is that we're going to mix some of the closest colors together. So we'll mix our warm red with our cool yellow. We'll play with the amount of color we put so we can get like a, a gradient. I find it hard to explain. So let's just start by putting each color in its place. So this is my cool yellow, the azo yellow. Then this is our warm yellow. They look very similar sometimes. It's crazy. Then we'll put our warm red here, cadmium red, medium hue, our cool red, quinacridone rose, and then our blues. So we're gonna start with our warm blue, French ultramarine. And our cool blue, phthalo blue green shade. Then what we'll do is that we are going to start mixing our secondary colors. So I'm going to put some warm yellow in each of these dots here. And then I'm going to add different amounts of red to try to create a gradient. So we're gonna try mixing directly on the paper, which I don't know how well it's gonna go, but we're trying things out. So we need to add the warm red. quite like mixing on the paper like this. It's fun. And I like having a gradient too. Now we'll do the same, but with the yellow and blue. And I want to start with the yellow first because it's the palest color of the two and it can get overpowered easily. So I'm going to make sure to add just a tiny bit of blue first because this daily blue is a very strong color. Okay, now we have our circles of yellow. So we are going to add some stale blue. I'm just adding a little bit to start. See, I added just a touch and already it changed the color a lot. So I'm not even gonna add some more. I'm just going to go directly in this one and dilute the color that I already have on my paintbrush. I like this color, it's very pretty. And for the third one, then I'm gonna add more blue. I like this color a lot. So now I'm just adding a little bit more in this middle color so I have a, a better gradient and a touch here. And now we're just going to repeat the same thing with the quinacridone rose with the French ultramarine. So let's put some pink in each circle and then we're gonna add some blue. It's very relaxing and also it's a very nice visual I find I haven't even finished the circle yet, but already I can see some options a lot better than what I did previously in different pages. Because with this, you can see everything in only one page. So I feel like it's, it's easier to understand the possibilities and to replicate it in the future, I'm sure. Okay, so here we have our circles. I'm gonna add a bit of blue in this middle circle right here. Oh, this is so pretty. I feel like this is not enough though. This is not a paper made for watercolor, it's a mixed media paper, which can be a bit of a downside to using a mixed media sketchbook as a swatch book. But we'll talk about this more when I do my updated swatch book video. 
beautiful colors. Wow. Okay, so that's gonna be it for this first circle. Now what we'll do is that we're gonna make some primaries across. So what we'll do is that I created this line here. We're gonna mix this quinacridone rose with this azo yellow. So cold colors together. And we'll be able to see the difference in the orange we get here compared to the orange we got here. So let's start with putting our yellow down first. So the, the azo yellow. So my two yellows are so similar on the pan as well. So I think I added the Hansa yellow instead of the azo yellow. So I'm gonna start over, add some azo yellow on top. I tried to remove as much yellow as I could, but they look so similar. Maybe someday I'll have to switch it to like a lemon yellow, my cold yellow, because it looks, it looks warm. But I did some research, but I might be wrong. So let me know what you think about my choices for my yellows. Anyway, now we're gonna add a bit of pink in this mix. Okay, so far it looks like a very similar mix, but maybe once it's dried, we'll see. Now here is gonna be a mix of Hansa yellow medium with French ultramarine, so our warm yellow and warm blue. So far this does not look like a very vibrant green. I like this green very much, the one I'm creating right now. It's not very vibrant, but it's my kind of color. Our last mix is going to be the warm red with the cold blue. So let's put the red down first. This is a beautiful color. I think I put maybe a bit too much blue. So this purple does not seem to be very vibrant. It's a pretty muddy color. But it's very pretty, but it's very muddy. So let's leave this to dry and then we'll come back to it. So if we have a look at the reds, I think that the vibrancy we get from these two mixes is pretty similar, to be honest. Maybe this mix is a bit more vibrant, which according to our chart here is expected because we mixed these two warm tones that tend towards an orange. And here we mix these two, the cold ones. They don't tend towards the same, but it's pretty vibrant either way. So. I like both of these. Maybe I would say I see the loss of vibrancy more in the redder tones. I see that this one is a bit more vibrant than this one. But for the others, so far it's not as evident. Maybe when it's fully dried, we'll see it. But so far, I don't know. If we have a look at our purples, here we see a big difference. We see that the mix with the cold red and the warm blue is very vibrant. It's very nice. And the mix with the warm red, with the cold blue, is a bit more muted. It's a bit muddier. It's more earthy, which I also like, but it's, it's nice to really see the difference side by side, you know? And if we have a look at the greens, it's pretty much the same thing that happens. The mix with the cold yellow and the cold blue get a very vibrant mix. And if we mix the warm yellow and the warm blue, we get a more earthier mix, something a bit more muted. So it's very nice to see. So this is what this wheel tells us. And next time I'll be able to compare with my little tool that I created here to be able to mix my colors a bit better.
Anyway, so that's it for the color mixing part. Now we're just gonna have some fun with adding my colors to my palette and doing a little swatch card. And that's gonna be it. We're gonna leave this video on a calm and relaxing swatching session. So I decided to do a little change. Essentially what is going to happen is that this first row is gonna remain the same, except that we're going to switch these two colors to the colors that I bought but I'm going to change the orders a little bit. So I'm going to do cold, warm, cold, warm, cold, warm, because right now it's doing cold, warm, warm, cold, cold, warm, and it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> then this row is gonna stay the same. This row is gonna change a little bit. I'm going to add two new colors here. So this row is gonna move here. This one is gonna move here. I'm going to remove these two. So uh, Daniel Smith Blue Appetite Genuine is gonna go and Tundra Violet is gonna go too because I don't use them a lot. I can just bring the tubes with me if I want to. Yeah, they're not essential. So we're just gonna, we're gonna see a bit more change in this bottom row right here. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm going to pour my paints in my, my containers, my little pans. So I have two full pans and two half pans. So these two will be our primary colors and these half pans will be the greens that I'm adding, which are going to replace these. Let's start by pouring quinacridone rolls in here. This is really satisfying filling up these full pans. And then what I like to do is just make sure that there is paint in the corners. So I put a lot <laughs> and maybe a bit too much. When it dries, I notice that the paint kind of shrinks down a little bit. So I often have to put a bit more paint in my pants, but this one is very full. We could swatch it right away. is such a pretty color but it, it looks very similar to the one I had before which is good because I was using it a lot so I'm pretty sure I'm going to use this one a lot too so this one is going to go here cool warm cool warm cool and then warm let's finish this roll this is French ultramarine so let's Fill this friend up. All right. Sal de tu nido, paloma linda. Anda y prueba tu volar. No tengas miedo, mi palomita. Que nada te va a pasar Anda y prueba tus alas bonitas Sin que el temor te limite Vuela paloma bien alto mi vida No dudes que siempre amanece Ya amanecerá Paloma linda Fuerza, paloma linda, el cielo te va a cuidar. Cuando no salga el sol, mi paloma, tu propia luz te va a guiar. Anda y prueba tus alas bonitas, sin que el temor te limite. Vuela, paloma, tan libre como la vida. No dudes que siempre amanece, que amanecerá. I want to try spring green on the palette. It's a new color for me and I don't yet know 
how often I'm going to reach for it. But I thought it was a super interesting color. I thought it would be great all by itself or in mixes. So that's what I want to test. But if you saw my latest video, which was the art haul in which I got this one, I swatched it and I made some mixes along with the Daniel Smith Quinacridone Rose that we just added to this palette and also with the French Ultramarine. So we did a couple of mixes and I think they were pretty interesting. It looks acidic, you know? So let's swatch it. Let's try to have a lighter wash towards the end. If you hear my cat, he's grooming himself. So if you hear weird noises, that's what it is. So yeah, I think this is an unconventional color for me. But these days I've been really reaching for like these pastel colors, these spring-like colors, these vibrant colors. And in the past, I was more drawn to muted tones, neutral tones, my earth tones, and I find myself changing. I don't know why. Another one I want to add is a Van Gogh color. So we are going to test this one out. If I use it a lot, I might buy a better quality paint, but it's turquoise blue. And the reason why I decided to add this one is that I've been on vacation lately and I took some beautiful pictures of the ocean and its turquoise waters. I wanted to paint some scenes of the beach and I had nothing that was the right color for this water. So I don't know, maybe I could try to mix a turquoise blue myself, but it would ask a lot of practice and I wanted to have an easy convenience color. And I'm pretty sure that a turquoise or like a cerulean turquoise or something like that is part of pretty much every set. Anyway, it's gonna be part of mine now. So at mass tone is pretty dark. And let's try to lighten it a little bit towards the end. Here we go. Sal de tu nido, paloma linda, anda y prueba tu volar. No tengas miedo, mi palomita, que nada te va a pasar. Anda y prueba tus alas bonitas, sin que el temor te limite. Vuela paloma bien alto mi vida, no dudes que siempre amanece, ya amanecerá. Linda paloma, paloma, paloma linda, paloma, paloma linda, paloma, paloma linda. Vuela paloma. So this was the first one here and this is the second the one we just did. So you can see, I wanted to show you the difference between Daniel Smith French Ultramarine and Daniel Smith Identron Blue. So you can really see a big difference. This one is way more luminous. You can really see the red undertone compared to here. So I think it's gonna be a better choice overall to create some mixes. And you can also see the difference between Van Gogh Quinacridone Rose and Daniel Smith Quinacridone Rose. And there isn't much of a difference. I think that Daniel Smith Quinacridone Rose is a bit warmer than Van Gogh Quinacridone Rose. We'll see how they behave. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that it was relaxing to you. Again, let me know if there are some things that you would do different this time or, you know, for the next big change, what should I do? What should I add? Do you think I have too many greens? I'm looking forward to your answers. So yeah, that's it. Thank you for watching this video. I uh, will see you soon, okay? Take care. Bye.